Hello there. Good evening, Hi, everybody. everybody. Hi. Hi. We've got another exciting show for you, and we're going to go back to Sarah Beats and see something really spectacular. Yay! So, enjoy. Don't forget to ask your questions. Yep, in your language, in the Netherlands. Espanol. English. Suomeksi. Hello. Enjoy the show. Okay. Okay, see you. <laughs> whoa, whoa, whoa. Should we get out of the way? <laughs> <Whoa. laughs> <laughs> 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 to synchronize? Yep. Oh, you do that. It was truly astonishing to see, scratched nearly 4,000 years ago, a symbol which is the origin of a letter I use every single day. We're looking at something that doesn't look very impressive to start with, because you're like, well, a few little inscriptions, and we've seen much more beautiful and bigger ones. But these ones are super, super important because it's part of the proto sinaitic or proto canaanite script. Yeah, what's and that? It's a script that where every character represents a sound, which is what we have in our alphabets, right? They have the A, it's the A sound. And the languages before that, like the hieroglyphic, it's made up of symbols. So a, a picture has a certain meaning. This is the first alphabet where every character is a sound. So it's yeah. a proper alphabet as we know it. Like this is the first alphabet? In, yeah, in history. In history. So can you read any of it? Uh, uh, there's like a little box which is represents a house, which would have been bait. Or, or baita in Hebrew. Bait, yeah, similar word. And so that is the sound B. And then there is a, a squiggly bit, like looks like a wave. That's under the house. Yeah, like in that horizontal yeah. line there. Yeah. And that's uh, the symbol for the letter M. Which is Maya. Maya or Mim. Mim. Me. Mim. Me. So that would be the letter M. And then from this alphabet, all yeah. are all the alphabets in the Middle East, and then later on. The Latin alphabet are derived, so the Phoenician alphabet and the Arabic alphabet and all the Semitic languages all come from this, this one. This one, yeah, because it was just much older than anything that they knew before. So. How did they break the code? Well, um, there was an Egyptologist called Sir Alan Gardner, and he had the Sphinx that he could study. And the Sphinx was found by Hilda Petrie in one of the mines. The Sphinx had two inscriptions, so there's hieroglyphic on one side, proto-Canaanite on the other side. And the hieroglyphic was very easy to read. It said, to the beloved of the lady. The lady would have been Hathor, the main goddess. But to the Canaanites, the main god would have been Baal. And the beloved would have been Baalat. So he knew, okay, this has to end with a T. And there has to be a B in there, and there has to be an Aleph sound in there, and a Lem sound in there. So all of these sounds were in there. So he had something to go by, and by doing this, he could break the code. And he figured out, okay, this is an alphabet, whereby the symbol for house, bait, just means B, because it starts with a B. And he was able to break the code this way, and that's how they figured out how to read proto canaanite so how did it go from the ox to the a well so the ox head was something that was already used by the egyptians as a hieroglyph and then the canaanites looked at the same symbol but they would call it aluf because that's what they would call a bull so that's a bull in their language starting with a aluf and they made it a little bit more simple so just the head with the horns like you see here on the rocks as well and then uh, a couple of hundred years later, the Phoenicians changed the symbol again by turning it and making it into this symbol. 
and then after that it was used as the Latin uh, A which we still use today so basically the horns are just touching the ground now Almost all the letters of the Latin alphabet are ultimately derived from the hieroglyphs that the Canaanites of Serebit chose to represent the sounds of their tongue. The broken rectangle that was the Egyptian sign for house was abbreviated by the Greeks, flipped by the Romans to create the Latin B. There were two Egyptian signs which represented snakes. These became the Greek Nu and R-N. So what was the Egyptian word for head? Uh, we don't know exactly, but something like tap top, but it's, it's of no interest for the Canaanite. What is their word for head? Very different. Roche. Roche, with an Roche. R. Yes, with an R at the beginning, and here they will reach the R. So this is the Canaanite This is the Canaanite head. Yeah. Then the Greeks make it a rather more abstract mm -hmm. representation of the head here, right. even though you can see the general idea of head. The Romans turned everything the other way, systematically. Everything is in the leading direction. But it's been centuries and centuries since we've seen any kind of image in this, and I don't think anybody would know that behind that letter is actually a profile of a head. Yes, again, the Egyptian hieroglyph is hiding in the R. Right. <laughs> They're always hiding. But it's not just Latin and Greek letters that derive from Cerebit. Almost all the world's alphabets share this same root. Scripts like Hebrew, Armenian, Cyrillic, Tibetan, Devanagari, Gujarati. What Cheddar and his followers did in the minds of Cerebit changed the world. They were not scribes or scholars. But when they adapted the Rebus principle, which was the basis of all ancient scripts, to make the first letters, they created a form of communication which would eventually sweep the globe. What do you think of the cave? Very good. Really, probably one of the best caves I've seen so far. And you're in it? Yeah. Awesome. And uh, can I language? Yeah. Descriptions? That's an hour way back from the Canaanite language cave. <laughs> what are you doing here? We're resting our feet, yeah. yeah. We're having a wee little break on our way down. Where you have been? <laughs> to the temple. Of temple of Hatfor. Yeah. And, and mines of what? Well, so she's been down the pit, the muddy mine. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry. And here's some dirt as well. Huh? You wouldn't work in this one? No, I'm good. Yeah, worked enough. Ready to yeah, go. Down. Ready enough for the yeah. busy day. Nice view. Moment. Our guide. The market is behind us, right? It's quite a normal machine. Beautiful carving, for Nick Woods. And hieroglyphic writings. 
Very that cool, is the huh? canon I got here. All the hieroglyphics, yeah, this one, huh? With this yeah. big bumpy Wait, head. Wait, 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 wait. Yeah. I'm using Jay's book past it. Yeah. That's the canon I got. Yeah. Big That's what we promised to show when we were in the episode of Naomi's. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's exactly. the canon I got yeah, in the Hot Tour Temple. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, that's the offering to the gods. Ah. That's the god in front of him, yeah. okay. and the king give the offering to the gods. Mm. So, but this is not a king, is it? It's or, a king. Does he just have this specific or maybe a worker? Maybe I mean, a normal, like, yeah. normal guy. Yeah. yeah, but he's give offering to, to the, the god. god. Yeah. yeah, and the god is in the boat. Ah, okay. Uh, actually, I think this is a dead person giving, going with the boat. To the gut, but maybe I don't think they're all from the same time. Yeah, and they're all like different sizes and kind of different styles. Yeah. By the way, we are not Egypt Egyptologists. No. We're just trying our luck with these things. Yeah, yeah. but so, certain things we do know, like the, yeah. the boats are really beautiful, aren't they? Yeah. Look at that one. With the ox. Is that the ox? I don't know what the, this the gazelle or like what that one. And also the animal. On the and this is like this animal is a tourist. What do you call it? It's a tourist. Yeah. 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 Wow. And the hieroglyphic in the top of it. Yeah. You can see it now. Hi. Yeah. Okay. We did a, yeah. Okay. We, the, 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 the
Hello guys, dinner time. Probably the entrance. Okay then, so this was some from the we are back and I hope you really enjoyed that. I thought that was really fascinating. I that mean, was really cool. it took me a while to, for it to click with this story, you know, for me to realize how big this story, like it took for me to see the documentary that you see little bits of to realize like, wow, this is amazing. And yes. you remember that trip we did with the two archaeologists? Yes. Um, and how excited they were about yeah, it? Yeah, they were then, so excited. That's what that I thought. year ago. Okay, this is big. Yeah. 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 <laughs> I mean, I have been to this cave, like, I can't imagine, like, 100 times, 200 yeah. times. I read about it, like, it's proto-cyanotic. Mm -hmm. And, like, I never, never clicked in my mind that, like, it's a big yeah. until we meet these two archaeologists and mm -hmm. they told us it's how big it is and like when I think of it it's really really big. This like, is actually the first alphabet. Like these I, are the first symbols. And it's where invented. This is where yeah. they have invented. Like mm -hmm. this is where the whole alphabet started. Yeah. It come yeah. from this place. Yes. Yeah, exactly. I think I think it's a really cool cool story because it was the workers' language. Mm -hmm. There were a lot of labor coming from different countries, even not only from Egypt, working on the mines. Yeah. And the Egyptians were using the hieroglyphs, but they were way too slow for the workers to write receipts or numbers or send messages or mm -hmm. report anything. So they invented these yeah. to make it faster because they're working at the same time. They didn't have time for the hieroglyphs coming. You have to do a painting to say house. Yeah, you know? yeah, it's, yeah. It's, it's a bit, it's, bit tricky if you hurry. So skilled they invite, yeah. invented this, and that's the base of Arabic uh, alphabets for Latin alphabets yeah. for Cyrillic for all of them. Yeah, that's Three. the base where yeah. it all started mm -hmm. because they were too too much in a hurry to make hieroglyphs. Yeah, I think yeah. it's really cool. Yeah, yeah. and, and it's there was really a call for it, and they, they they invented it, and then. All these workers travel to different places to work and, and, and tell all the other people that we have this really cool way of just writing what you say. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And just it just took off. One sound is one it's symbol. It's really, really yeah. cool. And it makes that you need a lot, you know, you need fewer symbols, so a lot easier to learn, a lot faster to learn, a lot easier to use. It revolutionized writing and, and reading. Yeah. Pretty much, I mean, these guys, the workers, they couldn't read the hieroglyphs. Mm -hmm. no. yeah. They could hear the words that the Egyptians were using for a hieroglyph, like, like the head. Yeah. Was it rush or, 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 or roh or whatever, but it sounded like it started with R. So they created that symbol to represent that sound. Mm, I mean, the, Not to mean the, the house, ancient but Egyptian, just meaning the... the yeah, I mean, the ancient Egyptian would have used a, a different word for it. So the the actual language, word, yeah. yeah, they use their own language. They use so their own language for head and the, the, R, the, the, R the head there. symbol. They just said, okay, this is a head, so which is rosh or something like that in Canaanite. So for them, that became the R because R, it yeah. started with an R in their language. And yeah. the B is beta, like the yeah, like house is beta. beta. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, house, home. Yeah. And, and one more thing, like the ancient Egyptian, they had like about 3,000 letters, that's like mm. 3,000 pictures, which means different things. So it was very hard to remember, even for like kind of everyone. Like, kind of but like Chinese. Yeah, yeah like yeah, the Chinese yeah. now, they, they still use the same symbols that from pictures. Mm -hmm. I remember but, this example, uh, the, someone, someone told me this example from, from Hieroglyph saying that if you want to say the roof, in hieroglyphs, you have to have a house, mm -hmm. and you have to have a symbol for up, a sky, and then you have to have a, a symbol of cover, like bridge. Yeah. And that all three uh, symbols together. would be roof. Yeah, yeah. 
So, so it's not a fast language. No, yeah. it's, something, it's something that only a very small part of the population would have been able to do. I mean, this is like specialist job. You are a writer. Like, you write. Yeah, that's yes, all you yeah, do. Yeah. You record yes, whatever and is going on. And you're that's all you do. And all you're going to swear. <laughs> and basically all the scripts yeah. for the Egyptians, mm -hmm. they had to learn this worker's language because they were using it. And yeah. that's, that way it went back to Cairo and you not know, took over. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, it well, traveled with the Phoenicians, which, you know, they would have been yeah. up in modern day Jordan, so very close to where the miners, the workers would have come from. And they were a huge seafaring trading nation. So they yeah. traveled all across the Mediterranean and took the script with them because the Phoenician alphabet is derived from that yeah. alphabet in Sarabit. So that means, if you look at it simplistically, mm. That because the, of the richness of what they found in Sinai, we also have the alphabet. Yes. Yeah. 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 And that's the right of from it. here. <laughs> yeah. For the, the whole world. Okay. Let's not think about China. Right? Yeah. 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 No, no. <laughs> but, but the Asian languages have their own alphabets that yeah. were. Yeah, and that'd be interesting way, someday to look at the parallelism of that because of the Chinese symbols and then all the other. Where did they get their alphabets from? Mm -hmm. That's an interesting thing. It is. Did yeah. this happen twice? Or is yeah, it somehow connected? It happened twice. Yeah, that's so... It's like so cool. yeah, yeah. Just like the yeah. caves. They were so far. Yeah. But yeah. that we were talking about. Yes. Yeah. It's like the same populations keep inventing the same yeah. stuff because it's not. Ne it's necessary. It is the yeah. way to go. Yeah. Like building pyramids. the most efficient way. You know, the Aztecs yeah. and the Mayans. They never and... met each no, other. No, there was no connection at that time. So, yeah, but they all build pyramids. Yeah, it's crazy. And we just saying to Anit the other day, like after seeing this and, and learning this, it's become easy to learn any other language. It's all just sounds. And yeah. Mm -hmm. It's really easy after you know these letters and what it means and like how it turned. And it's easy to learn any other language because they're all connected. It's even the Arabic. It comes from the Kanani language. It comes from yeah. the same thing. Mm -hmm. It's amazing. turned to uh, the Nabataean, and the Arabic comes from the Nabataean. Yeah. Yeah. So it's everything. Yeah, and that's comes really from this evident one. because the, the Bedouin Arabic is actually closer to the classic Arabic mm. than Egyptian Arabic. Yeah. yeah. Because yeah. they have the same roots. That's yeah. where it came from. The yeah. Egyptian Arabic is now like a modern version of Arabic to make it easier. Yeah. And skipping some sounds and, and making it easier for people to, to, to yeah. mm. write and, yeah. and read and, and, and talk. But yeah. this is the gateway to culture as well. I mean, this is what everyone says. You learn the alphabet and you start to see into the culture of yes. where we're coming from. And we're all coming mm. from this... It's amazing. I yeah. <sighs> amazing that it, it originated here. Yeah. 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 Absolutely. Very stunning. surprising. Yeah. I want to say something yeah. that I'm proud that I'm Egyptian. Oh, <laughs> you should be. Well, the richness of your heritage is so amazing. And that's what I found about visiting Egypt and Sinai. I mean, I have traveled the world for many, many years before settling here. In Dahab. And one of the things I love is because of the richness of the history here, I feel that it's inside of the culture and it brings a more openness to the mm. culture mm -hmm. because you can see the connections of the past things and how, you know, dynasties were rising and falling. And I feel that as Egyptians, you have this more open mind, especially for receiving visitors and you guys are always curious. Where are you from? Where are you from? You know, this is, but it's because you have such a rich history and like everyone knows about the pyramids that it creates this very welcoming atmosphere. And, you know, you don't find it in every country the same. Mm -hmm. I feel like some, you know, the culture kind of gets more lost, but you can't lose the pyramids. I mean, yeah. they're just kind of in your face. Yes. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. And you yeah. have so much history and that's what I love about Egypt. I mean, yeah. it's like, 
And and the history of the Sinai is still so little known. Yeah. I mean, this is like There's something. There's a lot that, more to be found. Yeah. I'm sure of it. Yeah. If yeah. that would have been anywhere else, you know, it would have been like a huge deal. You know, it would have been like a national park, and like everybody would be going. I don't know if you want that anyway, but. You know, <laughs> I feel like but we should. Yeah, maybe like keep it small. <laughs> we should make a scratch map for Sinai. We went to the. We covered this part. Okay, we covered that part, and like. <laughs> yeah. Mark it off. Yeah. Like yeah, yeah. highlight what we've looked at, and you guys follow us on the map and show us places. Go there, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And we'll be like, no, <laughs> not that one, not, not that one. Not that one. <laughs> but it's really amazing that what we have in the Sinai, and nobody knows about it. I mean, you are talking about the pyramids. Everybody knows about yeah. the pyramids. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But what we are showing today is huge. For me, in even many more than ways, the pyramids. Yeah. In, in many ways, this is way more important than pyramids. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. But <laughs> nobody knows about it. And mm-hmm. it exists here in the Sinai yeah. and in the open. Like yeah. Anyone can reach it. Anyone yeah. can go to it. It's, yeah. Again, it's no there. fence around it. Like we no. just, you know, there's a little sign. No ticket but proof. we just climbed in and, you know, we saw it. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Yeah, and yeah, there is a lot of stuff like we seen little, we seen the Naomi's, we seen the cave, we seen the proto cyanotic. We mm-hmm. still more stuff you're gonna see uh, also in, in 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 Sinai. There is a lot of history here, a lot of important stuff that nobody talks about it, and and I hope that we can show it in our next uh, episodes. Yeah, hopefully. Yeah. Will be next year because summer will start soon and we'll yeah, yeah, yeah. we'll start water. Talk, to, we're go to, talk water. to your people. I want to find the waterfalls. I know there are waterfalls inside. Mm, there are there waterfalls are. inside. Yeah. Yeah, there are. Yeah. yeah. There is one near uh, yeah. Abu Galum here. Yeah. I didn't have waterfall for for a while called Wadi Shalala. And there is one near Al Karm. Yes. Where we the spent ecology. the night once, the ecology. Yeah, 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 yeah. that one we And there is one yet. even in, in uh, Sarabit, near Sarabit as well. Wow. Yeah. 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 Anywhere but, up in the high mountains, there yeah, would yeah. be a few of them. And there yeah. is one, but not waterfalls, in, in St. Catherine is, is there as well. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Not really big one, but there is some yeah. I mean, water win- flowing. Yeah. Winter, early spring would be the time yeah. for there to be water. Yeah. Yeah, actually there flowing. Is, yeah, yeah. There is, yeah, yeah. But even now, it's still pretty green and and a lot of water. I think in the high mountains, like you would still be able to see that in the near to Saint Catherine. Yeah. Wolfgang, hi. Oh, hello, hi. Wolfgang. Hi, Wolfgang. Hello. Hello. Thank you. <laughs> there, is, there is a delay. You're gonna hear that later. There's a delay in the internet. But hi, Wolfgang. When you hear it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Now, right now, we are just finishing the video, but. We are nearly finishing the episode. <laughs> About 15 minutes delay. Nice to see you again. Yeah, yeah nice yeah. to see you. Nice to have you with us. Yeah. Well, yeah, as the as the temperature starts to rise, we're going to yeah. start to take more plunges and yep. show you some more of this natural beauty we have here, huh? Yes. Yeah. 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 So. That's our shift, you know. From exactly. Winter is desert time. It's like time to go on hikes. Now we're slowly moving into water time. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Hashtag... Yeah. Whale shark two days ago. <laughs> oh, really? And dolphins. Oh, what? Really? As well. No. I haven't Where? heard about that. Dolphins. <laughs> what? I, I know. Eagle, uh, uh, Monterey yesterday. Where? Oh, south. Ah. Uh, what? The dolphins oh, were also Nubi. south. Dolphins. Nubi saw Manta and Nubi saw whale shark. <gasps> but that guy. We'll talk about him later. Let's go diving with him. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we're starting to get some aquatic visitors, so come on down and visit us because yes. here come all the good stuff. Yep. Yeah, we're exactly. going to get our turtles back in the bay soon. Yeah. And well, we're um, waiting for your diving episode. Yes, I know. Yeah. We're preparing it. We're looking through. We're going to maybe map some stuff out for you and then take you to each site. That's kind of our plan over the year. Yeah. Nice. So, and also yeah. maybe have someone interesting about the sky and talking about the sky as well. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. 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 yeah, that would Summer be cool. photographs of oh, the stars. Yeah. Yeah. Summer and winter. Um, we'll have he's meteorite gonna collect showers. Few of them and maybe have like a, um, a study episode where he can show them and talk about them. And, yes, yeah. Yeah. that would be yeah. awesome. He's great. Yeah. 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 His photos are very great. I don't know how he make it with mm-hmm. his own camera for the sky and yeah. how he have these amazing views and the Milky yeah. Way, yeah, Milky Way and Stunning. other 
stars like yeah he's <laughs> so good in this so. well we're Very looking cool. forward to it okay. yeah okay so what are we gonna see next week well could be diving could be diving Possibly. could be shopping with katya oh yeah oh yeah yeah we might be shopping with katya okay. yeah or <laughs> maybe the star guy yeah. Like, yeah 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 ask him if he's coming okay. can do that stay tuned yeah. Yes. We'll see you soon. Hope to see you next week. Yay. Hope to see you next Bye. week. Don't forget to ask your questions in the comment and we'll answer them next time. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Bye-bye. Bye. 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 Thanks for watching.